So this pressure you face, is it like mainly from uh, family members or the, you know, the own Muslim community or is it also from outside? Because I can expect that people, when they hear or see you're Muslim, they expect you to know certain things or be a certain way and maybe they think you're a representative of Islam. So do you feel a pressure from like non-Muslims that you might do something wrong and it might reflect badly on all other Muslims? Does this fear or pressure exist? It's mainly external pressure. It's definitely pressure from family as well. So like my mom used to say, you're a Muslim woman, how can you dress like this? Or like, you know, I used to be called out for wearing certain clothes and she would tell me, go and change. You cannot go out like this. But then, you know, when you're young, you're like, okay, I'll wear cardigan outside take out. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I tell you, okay, this is very, very common. So the pressure definitely comes from both sides. But it's mainly from outside because we tend to want to assimilate to the cultures outside of our household. So mainly the pressure comes from outside, from having to be a certain way or act a certain way. I don't really care like, you know, when people say you wear the hijab, therefore you have to behave in this way, this way, this way, this manner. To me, I think when I decided to put it on, when I decided to tell the world that I'm Muslim by by visual, I was already at the point where I'm just like, this piece of my cloth is between is 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 between me and my my lord. There's nothing to, got to do with people, so there's no perfect Muslim out there. So it, I think growing up, mainly the pressures were coming from outside, like to be a certain way, to dress a certain way, to speak a certain way, to behave a certain way. But I did not feel the pressure of having to put it on or having to behave like a Muslim back then because my surroundings, my pe- my my friends, mainly they were not they were not Muslim, so they don't care. They don't care. I think the only pressure I faced for back then was because I was in banking, you know, we had a lot of events and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, was having to socialize and people like, hey, Sha, you don't drink. So there are certain, certain lines that I, I draw across. I never go for events. I never touch alcohol and things like that. So there's, there are lines that I draw across. And it came to a point where you just like give up and you're like, oh, Sha doesn't drink. So because she, she's a Muslim, <laughs> you know, she looks like one of us, but she just doesn't drink. Yeah. So there was that pressure. But there was no pressure to become like a, a good Muslim or whatever. Like a Muslim yeah. have, has to be a Muslim maybe has to be a certain way, no. Unless yeah. that came from my parents. But that was not very like yeah, because I'm not with my parents twenty four seven outside anyway. Actually I agree with, with Shahira most of the things that she faced we are also facing here. Okay, in Malaysia. Okay. But in short, actually it's like this. Like, I think um it's about uh managing uh managing expectations and also um uh, belief in yourself Belief in your principles I mean if you believe you're the, If you understand What Islam is And what You're expected of As a Muslim Not from your parents Not from your relatives Not from your from your society But what Islam Tells you to do Then you believe In yourself You believe in your In your principles And you will stand firm Regardless of whatever Pressure that you face I mean uh, I came to this conclusion uh, It took a while For me to come to this conclusion Actually Okay lah So in on- honesty Because we are from Singapore So there is a, a good understanding of being in a multiracial, multicultural or religious society. So I don't really feel any pressure of sorts from non-Muslims that I have to uphold myself in a certain way. It's more of my dealings with the Muslims that are more challenging, I would say. Basically, it's the ideology difference that we have as Muslims that are tougher to, to manage than having to answer to a non-Muslim on, on how we behave or how we dress up and all that. How ideologies have been in, embedded in our society. I, I'll just be straight. Lah. Example, example. So my uh, some of my family members, they, they have this ideology that uh, during Maghrib, they must on the lights. So I, last time when we were younger, we just on the lights because that's what our parents asked us to do. So I asked, why must on the lights during Maghrib? The answer is because Shaitan is there. So <laughs> if you on the lights, Shaitan will run away. <laughs> that's, the, okay. that's the mindset. Actually, there is a hadith which, which says this, you know, by the way. No, but the, the hadith no, states no. that Shaitan ran around during Maghrib. Ah, run away, no. That, that's, that's close the window one. and doors. That's the hadith. Yes. But there was an understanding. Yes. So it's like, you just follow me. If you were to question on a perspective or analytical part, like, doesn't look that logic eh? but you will be asked to just keep quiet and follow so that's the tough part in my opinion so when when you come up with with the proof like just now uh, the uh, brother MJ said right you came up with the proof that hey, actually the hadith but the hadith only focuses on 
when when it's maghrib close your windows and doors that's that's correct but then there's no relation to kena on lampu yeah, that shine runs away yeah, that, that, that's an addition yeah, you, yeah. See, you see where so i i would i would say this when when my not my ideology changed when i started to learn about religion properly because last time was all about following and not understanding that i started to lose friends i did that and these are muslims started to lose friends along the way uh, family members who couldn't agree but it's actually us following the quran and sunnah but like i said it's embedded in society that we are supposed to follow a certain way especially if we are living in this country there's no two ways about it mm-hmm. Yeah, so that's I think the bigger challenge. I believe we all are from Asian parenthood. So even for me, even though I'm I wasn't Muslim back then, uh, the teaching style is pretty much the same. Which is like, if you don't do this, you go to hell, <laughs> or you do this, you go to hell. Actually, my parents are quite okay lah. That is Asian parenthood, right? They take the, the cane and they will cane you if you are a naughty boy. So, in that sense, we fail to understand certain things we are supposed to do. So uh, in the future, I guess we, as a good advice, I think we all should all learn more about the reason behind the things we do, so that we we perform it with you know, understanding of what we do. Instead.